This video covers everything that you need to know about acquiring, modding, and playing Ash. You can navigate between the sections of the guide using the chapter bar along the bottom of the video, or by using the timestamps in the description. I'll give you a quick summary of Ash's playstyle, so you can decide whether or not this guide is for you. Then I'll have a look at how he fits into the lore of the game, and explain how to get the frame in the first place. Then I'll go into detail about how to play Ash, including looking at his abilities, his augments, looking at some different mod configurations, and talking about the sort of weapons that you might want to use with him. Ash is a stealthy frame that can disappear from view, teleport around the battlefield, and summon shadowy clones to execute targets. He's got good survivability, decent mobility, and can work well against individual targets as well as against groups. During the Orokin era, Ash was revered as an avatar of murder by the Scoria, an Orokin school of assassination. However, as well as talking about his martial prowess, the Laverian entry for Ash also mentions how Ash helped to free members of the assassination school from servitude, including appearing to show compassion to a school member who couldn't bring himself to carry out his murderous orders. The Laverian even mentions Ash's leading role in dispatching the leadership of the assassination school during the fall of the Orokin raising further questions about the frame's opinion about dealing death. Ash's blueprint can be purchased from the market, but his component blueprints can only be obtained from Railjack defense missions as Rotation C rewards with about a 10% drop rate. That means you're going to need to complete 20 waves of defense for about a 1 in 10 chance of getting a single component blueprint. The specific missions for the components are Falling Glory in Venus Proxima for the systems, Arva Vector in Neptune Proxima for the Neuroptics, and Obol Crossing in Pluto Proxima for the Chassis. As with any defense mission, frames like Frost, Limbo, etc. can be really useful for completing these missions, especially if you're soloing them. But another option that I found to be quite good was to crack out your Necromech, because it's a Railjack mission. And if you have Excal Umbra unlocked, as well as having your Necromech unlocked, then you can use them together because Excal Umbra will run around shooting people for you while you control the Necromech. Ash does have a Prime variant, and you can see whether Ash Prime is available or whether he's vaulted by checking in the description below. I'll always make sure that that's updated, so whenever his vault status changes, I'll update the description and you'll know that at the time you're watching this, that information will be accurate. Ash's abilities make him quite versatile. His ability to disappear from sight gives him good survivability, and he has abilities that can help against single targets and against groups. His passive and the augment for his first ability also scale really well against high level enemies, so he remains usable in high level content. His hit and run playstyle is really great for keeping enemies disoriented, and his powerful bleeds are great for wearing down tougher targets. Playing Ash tends to feel more methodical and deliberate than many of the other frames. And unlike frames that are all about spamming abilities or using one ability over and over, Ash is really great for people who want to focus on gunplay or melee combat, but still be able to choose the right ability at the right time from a balanced set of abilities as needed. Ash's passive is an increase to both the damage and duration of any bleed effects that he inflicts, so any weapon with a high slash damage works really well when used by Ash. Ash's first ability is Shuriken. It launches two projectiles that will hit the two targets closest to where you're aiming. The Shurikens lock onto their targets when launched and will follow moving targets even if they move out of sight. This means the ability is really good for hitting hard to target enemies, and it's good for finishing off low health enemies, or because it always inflicts a bleed, it's really nice for stacking up bleeds on high level enemies. Smokescreen is Ash's primary survival tool. It stuns nearby enemies and makes Ash invisible for about 8 seconds depending on mods. It's a great panic button ability for when you need to get out of dicey situations and you can use it proactively for avoiding alarms in spy missions and stuff like that. Teleport allows Ash to instantly move to enemies, allies, and other points of interest, like excavators, cryopods, 
rescue targets, etc. This ability is really useful for reaching those annoying enemies that sit off at a distance sniping you, and it's also great for bypassing sensors in spy missions and other things like that. When used on enemies, the ability is supposed to open them up to melee finishes, but often it feels pretty buggy to me and I don't like to rely on it for this, so I tend to use it exclusively for mobility purposes. Blade Storm summons clones of Ash which attack enemies. The ability is a two-part ability in that the first time you trigger it, you go into a targeting mode. While in this mode, moving your crosshair over an enemy will put up to three marks over their head based on how much health they have left. Enemies will never receive more marks than are needed to kill them outright. For each mark that's created, the amount of energy specified in the ability summary will be consumed. Triggering the ability a second time will cause Ash's clones to attack the marked targets. For each mark above a target, that target will be attacked once by a clone. Importantly, whenever Ash is invisible, each mark will cost half as much energy. Because Ash's smoke screen costs as much as three marks of Blade Storm, you should always try to pop smoke screen if you plan on marking more than two enemies, since the energy that you save from being stealthed ends up being more than enough to kind of pay for the smoke screen. When you've got lots of enemies to take care of at once, popping smoke screen and then setting your clones on everything is a great way of getting control of the mission. Since all you need to do to mark targets is mouse over them, you can easily attack everything around you in about a second flat just by popping blade storm, swiping across the scene and then hitting blade storm again. The other thing to know about blade storm is that once you've triggered your clones, you can also trigger your teleport ability to join in on the action. It looks pretty cool and it makes you immune to damage for the duration of the ability, but it does take control away from you for a few seconds and it can be really hard to predict where you're going to end up at the end of the ability. Ash has four augment mods, each of which affect one of his abilities. Seeking Shuriken augments Ash's shurikens so that enemies hit by the ability have their armor reduced. At max rank, this effect reduces enemy armor by 70% for eight seconds. The amount of damage reduction is affected by ability strength, so mods like Intensify can increase the amount of damage reduction. This augment is obviously very useful against highly armored enemies and debuffs two targets for a really low amount of energy. The Smoke Shadow Augment basically just makes Ash's smoke screen ability affect his allies as well as himself and his companions. As far as I'm concerned, this is his least useful augment and I can't really think of any time that I'd actually use it in a build. Fatal Teleport is an augment that I want to love, but that in my mind it's just not practical enough to recommend for anything other than like a fun gimmicky build. Simply put, the augment changes Ash's teleport into one that automatically performs a finisher on the target and does so with a 200% damage bonus. It sounds good in theory, but in practice it ends up having a few downsides. While it does feel pretty epic to appear behind an enemy and finish them off, even though you get that 200% damage bonus, I often feel the fact that you get slowed down so much really makes this augment frustrating. Warframe's a pretty fast paced game and often I feel like I get slowed down too much by this augment and I'd rather just teleport to the enemy and do my own thing. Rising Storm is an augment for Blade Storm that causes each Blade Storm attack to increase your melee combo counter by 4. It also gives you a passive plus 10 seconds to your combo duration. Using Blade Storm on a large crowd with this augment equipped will get your combo points up really fast. So if you're running a melee build with something like Blood Rush that's affected by combo count, this augment is really great at making those sorts of builds shine. A recommendation for modding Ash is to create a balanced build that complements his versatility. In all of the builds that I do for Ash, I use the Steel Charge Aura to give me the most capacity to play with. This is the build that I use with Ash 99% of the time. It includes the Seeking Shuriken Augment so that I can strip armor from troublesome enemies if needed. And using Transient Fortitude gets the armor reduction just over 100% at the expense of dropping the duration of Smoke Screen's invisibility. The same goes for Fleeting Expertise, which gives efficiency at the cost of duration. However, the duration hit is offset somewhat by continuity, meaning that Smoke Screen still lasts for long enough to get out of trouble or to mark up a bunch of Blade Storm targets. Aside from that, I've got a couple of survivability mods, and I've got Flow to give me a bit more energy to work with. 
For arcanes, you can really use whatever you prefer. And yes, I know that my arcanes need some work. If I feel like focusing on melee gameplay, then I'll use an identical build, except that I'll swap Seeking Shuriken out for Rising Storm. This just means that I can build up combo points really fast at the expense of being able to strip armor. Finally, if you do like the idea of a Fatal Teleport build, here's an example which completely throws duration out the window in favor of ability strength. Since the idea is that you're gonna be performing a lot of finishes with this build, the Trickery and Ultimatum Arcanes are worth using as they provide a chance of invisibility and bonus armor for finisher kills. Also, if you do use this build, be sure to use a hammer or a rapier as your melee weapon as those weapons get a huge damage multiplier bonus. If you're like me, the first thing you thought of when you read Fatal Teleport with its bonus to finishes was that maybe you could pair it up with the Covert Lethality mod that's exclusive to daggers and also gives a 200% bonus to finishes. However, the bonus damage still only takes that finisher bonus up to about eight times, whereas Rapiers and hammers have a 24 times bonus. And when I tested this out, it was just no competition. The hammers and the rapiers did so much more damage than a dagger with covert lethality on it. Regardless of how you build Ash, his passive always does that bonus to bleed damage. So make sure that you try to run a weapon that has slash damage on it so that you can take advantage of that little buff. If there's anything about Ash I didn't cover or you still have questions, just let me know in the comments and make sure you check out the other guides on my channel. Until then, happy gaming. Ugh.